Our intellectual path towards a scalable machine learning on graphs begins from the construction of generalizations of the convolution operator to signals supported on graphs. We will build this generalization by observing that even though we do not often think of them as such, convolutions are operations on graphs. In order to express convolutions as operations on graphs, begin by observing that we can always describe discrete time and space using graphs that support either time or space signals. Indeed, consider a time signal x with components xi and associate individual components with individual nodes of a directed line graphs. A directed line graph is a good description of the proximity and causality of time, and it is therefore also a good description for the underlying structure of the signal x. Likewise, consider an image defined as a signal x with components xij and associate each of these components with a node of a grid graph. The grid graph is a good description of the local structure of the plane, and it is therefore also a good description of the underlying structure of the signal x. That we can describe time and space using graphs is an almost trivial observation, but one that nonetheless has interesting conclusions. Out of this, the one that is germane to our current discussion is that we can use line and grid graphs to write convolutions as polynomials on their respective adjacency matrices. Let us begin with the case of a signal supported in time and suppose that we want to implement a convolutional filter with coefficients hk. We know that the output of such a filter is a weighted linear combination of shifted versions of the input signal x. The first term of the convolution sum is just the signal x scaled by coefficient h0. The second term of the convolution sum is a shifted version of the signal x scaled by coefficient h1, but we can obtain this shifted version of x by multiplication with the adjacency matrix of the line graph. The third element of the convolution sum is a two-shifted version of the signal x scaled by coefficient h2, but we can obtain this two-shifted version of x through multiplication by the square of the adjacency matrix of the line graph. The next term is a three-shifted version of the signal x scaled by coefficient h3, which we can obtain by multiplying the original signal x by the adjacency matrix of the line graph three times. We keep adding terms to the convolution sum until the order of the filter so that in the end we write the convolution as a pre-multiplication of the signal x by a polynomial on the adjacency matrix of the line graph modulated by coefficients hk. This illustrates that we can write the convolution in time as a polynomial on the shift operator of the directed line graph. Pretty much the same holds true for images, except that now the polynomial is on the adjacency matrix of the grid graph. This is true because we can write a spatial filter as a linear combination of diffuse versions of the input signal, and we can obtain these diffuse versions by multiplying the, the original signal x by subsequent powers of the adjacency matrix of the grid graph. We begin by adding the signal modulated by coefficient h0 and we further add a diffuse version of the signal x modulated by coefficient h1. This diffuse version of x can be obtained by multiplying the original x with the adjacency matrix S of the grid graph. The next entry of the convolution sum is a diffusion of the diffuse signal scaled by coefficient h2, which we can obtain through a second multiplication with the adjacency matrix S. The fourth term of the convolution sum is a diffusion of the diffusion of the diffuse signal, scaled by coefficient h3. We can obtain this thrice diffuse signal by multiplying x 
by the third power of s. We keep adding terms to this sum as required by the order of the filter. We end up with the convolution expressed as a pre-multiplication of the signal x by a polynomial on the adjacency matrix of the grid graph modulated by coefficient hk. Pervasive and important though they are, time and space signals constitute a rather limited class. Their interpretation as graph signals, however, hints that we can use graphs as generic descriptors of signal structure, in which signal values are associated to nodes of a graph, and edges of the graph express an expectation of similarity between signal components. For instance, nodes can represent customers, signal values, product ratings, and edges are cosine similarities between past scores. This provides an appropriate description of the types of signals that appear in recommendation systems. Alternatively, nodes can be drones, signal values are velocities, and edges can represent sensing and communication ranges. This is an appropriate description of a decentralized autonomous system. Or we can have nodes representing transceiver, signal values representing quality of service requirements, and edges representing wireless channel strengths. This is an appropriate description of a wireless communication system. Graphs can therefore provide a significant expansion of the class of signals that we can process. But we have seen this already. Our concern here is on how to design convolutional processing of graph signals, but at least in two cases, we already know what to do. If we are given a graph signal supported on a line graph, we know how to build a polynomial on that adjacency matrix that represents the time convolution. If we are given a signal supported on a grid graph, we know how to build a polynomial on this other adjacency matrix that represents the convolution of signals in space. But it is not only that we know how to build these polynomials, these polynomials are the same. We can therefore proceed by analogy. If we are given a signal supported on a certain graph, we define a graph convolutional filter to process such a signal as a polynomial on a matrix representation of the graph that supports the signal. To illustrate this idea, consider a signal supported on the graph shown on the left and suppose that we want to run a convolutional graph filter with coefficients hk. The output of this convolutional graph filter is defined as a summation of diffused versions of the input signal x scaled by respective coefficients. We begin by adding the signal x itself modulated by coefficient h0. We then add a diffused version of the signal x modulated by coefficient h1. A twice diffused version of x modulated by coefficient h2, a thrice diffuse version of the input x scaled by coefficient h3, and so on. In the end, the graph convolution is expressed as a pre-multiplication of the signal x with a polynomial on a matrix representation of this graph modulated by coefficients hk. What happens if we change the graph? This yields a different graph signal supported on a different graph, but the expression for the graph convolutional filter is the same. We begin by adding the signal itself. We then add a diffused version of the signal x modulated by a different coefficient. We further add a twice diffused version of the signal x and a thrice diffused version of x and whatever number of times are required by the convolutional filter order. In the end, we have the same expression as before, in which the signal x is pre-multiplied by a polynomial 
on the matrix representation of the graph S modulated by coefficients HK. It goes without saying that the expressions for the convolutions are the same in both graphs, but the resulting convolutions can be quite different. This is, of course, because the graphs represented by S can be quite different. As highlighted by our illustrations, multiplication of a graph signal with a matrix representation of the graph on which it is supported is a local operation. This is a feature that graph convolutions share with conventional convolutions in time and space and that underlies their practical value, as we will see throughout the next few weeks.